So one computer algebra system that I'm not going to spend too much time on other than to just tell you it's there and I will leave it up to you to explore it or not is the Wolfram's version of computer algebra system that's available for free. So if you go to Wolfram Cloud, um, which I was testing out before this session, uh, they have a free version, basically a free version of Mathematica there. Wolfram's oldest product that's been around forever is Mathematica. And Mathematica is probably the most uh, um, well-known computer algebra system that can do uh, fairly complex symbolic calculation. In fact, part of my graduate research work was building a, a computational model of an um, 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 atomic vapor cell system thing <laughs> using Mathematica. So it, it's a, but having said all that, the one biggest downside with the Mathematica is that it costs money, it's pretty expensive. I think if you buy annual license, it's like hundred dollars per year. Anyways, it costs money. So um, there is a free version. That's why I'm showing you this. Uh, if you make an account, uh, the basic plan is free. And I, I do have a free account that I'm going to um, use to sign in with. And oh, I hope that's right. I don't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is all from cloud and uh, Mathematica works with uh, what they call notebook as a way to organize the code. And it has a fairly extensive documentation system, which you can access with something like this question mark integrate that'll tell you the syntax for the fun command called integrate. And if this isn't enough, you can do two question marks integrate. So um, yeah, tells you a little bit more. So using that, you can do something like, I don't know what I was doing on all from alpha before. Integrate sine of x squared from x goes to zero to one. Um, there's a, a <laughs> syntax for Wolfram language, <laughs> which I'm familiar with <laughs> because of my experience with it. And all of that takes time to learn. Um, it's uh, like using square brackets for function inputs and how every function is capitalized for some weird reason. It doesn't have to be, that's the naming convention. Um, and this is the, I guess I'm technically doing symbolic integration, although yeah, yeah, that's why it's doing this. Uh, there's also something called the N integrate for numerical integral. Um, so, so yeah, it, it's its own language and you can use this to um, solve, you, you can use this to answer questions like um, um, solving a system of equations. Uh, let's say I had a system of equation of um, a plus b is equal to zero and uh, a plus b, uh, 2b <laughs> is equal to two. Um, it's the same one you saw before. And there's a function within mathematical called solve and you can bring up the the documentation thing to help you tell you about what it is. Oh, by the way, I probably should explain. Um, so when I do have solve, there's a distinction between me pressing enter, which is what you see now, and me pressing shift enter, <laughs> which is what you see me do when I want to evaluate something. Uh, I just remembering that, that you can see my hands, you can see what keys I'm pressing. Um, so all of this, you know, makes it mathematically complicated. That's why. That's the second reason you might not want to use Mathematica because it has its own idiosyncratic things that's not, um, that doesn't match up nicely with any other programming language you might learn. Anyways, so I can do this, solve. This is a system of equations for A and B. That's the syntax for solve. I'm using that syntax there. And I just type the shift enter, that gets me that. Um, so yeah, it, it this is a, another computer algebra system. And it, it, uh, it's kind of its own um, programming language and it can take a, a fair amount of time to learn. Um, unlike, uh, you know, all from alpha where you just guess at the syntax, uh, this has an actual syntax. If I do something simple like, you know, uh, this integrate. If I do something simple and silly, like uh, typing that instead of 
proper sign function and typing this instead of the correct um, uh, square brackets, it'll just, uh, you know, it'll give me something nonsensical. <laughs> uh, it basically interpreted this SIN as a, a variable, like there's a variable named SIN <laughs> instead of uh, it being a sign function. So it's its own programming language. It takes time to learn. You have to be careful. It's, uh, um, it's like any sophisticated tool. It, um, if you are not careful in using it correctly, like, you know, a question asks you, what is the, what is this integral? And you uh, put this into from <laughs> cloud and say, this is the answer. Then I will know that you didn't know what you're doing. <laughs> um, so, so this is a, another example of computer algebra system. That's a proper computer algebra system. And uh, this can be used for a number of things. Let me, um, let me use this to illustrate uh, what I'll get to using the other tool that's available for free with, I hope, no limitations. So Wolfram Cloud, it'll, at some point, it'll just limit you, either in terms of the computation time. So, oh, I think I can try this. Um, so I was actually trying this before this virtual class session, integrate um, one over, it went away. Anyways, um, um, from x equals, I don't know, minus one to x equals plus one. And when I tried this just before the session, it timed out. It didn't, um, yeah. It, this is one of the integrals you see done in one of the, I think chapter seven stuff and yeah, standard computation time exceeded. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure if I try this again here, so integrating, um, Again, being mindful of the correct syntax, one over square root of x squared plus y squared from um, x equals minus one to plus one. Then I'm pretty sure the time will, it'll time out here as well. Uh, or I don't know how long I want to wait for that. Um, maybe 20 more seconds. It's either uh, Wolfram Cloud times me out or I time it out. The thing is, I think uh, this uh, integral, um, there's some singularities you have to worry about. That's probably why. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm sure this integral becomes much simpler if you enter some assumptions. Let me do this. Um, so I'm pretty sure this integral, if I just let it, oh wait, it didn't run out of time. Huh. Okay, so this one didn't, but you can come up with some expression where it'll time out. <laughs> so, um, so, so let me demonstrate just to one more thing on this system. And then um, I will show you the final and the uh, final computer algebra system that's fully free. And it's the one that I would uh, recommend that you try learning if you want to, if you have any inclination to learn either computer algebra system or um, what might be called a scientific thing using some programming language, the next system I'll show you is a good one to learn uh, to illustrate some principles and some of the syntax that might be familiar in other languages you will encounter throughout your career. Mathematica is a fairly again, idiosyncratic thing, because it's got its own thing that's <laughs> like nothing else. <laughs> it's not even like a MATLAB, uh, even MATLAB, um, another popular um, computer, is it that computer algebra system? A MATLAB is more of a programming language. Anyways, uh, maybe with a symbolic package, symbolics package, it can be considered a computer al algebra system. MATLAB's syntax is a very un uh, unlike mathematical syntax. So let me do one last demonstration here. What I want to demonstrate actually is the same e exact equation you saw earlier. These equations, um, let me try solving them in using Mathematica or the free version of Mathematica on Ofram Cloud. So the simplest thing to do is the kind of the intuitive thing. You use this solve uh, function. Again, uh, this is probably the best thing about Mathematica or Wolfram stuff, which is that they have a very extensive set of documentations 
that helps uh, first time users. It, um, it that, that is really the one thing to recommend for it. Um, so I already know the syntax. So I'm going to use my knowledge of its syntax. So my equations are I1 equals I2 plus I3, uh, V1 minus I3 R3 uh, plus I2 R2 minus V2 is equal to zero. And the last one, V2 minus I, I forget which is one and I think it is is two. I mean, you know, the order doesn't matter. And I'm making use of something that Mathematica has that not everyone else has, which is an implied multipl multiplication. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, Mathematica was written more for people in academic research in math and well, physics and sciences. And um, this is one of the ways in which it violates the usual convention of programming. This a uh, space implying multiplication you won't see that in any other language because it's uh, super confusing and taxing for the parsers. Um, but Mathematica is an implied multiplication by space. Uh, I can even do this. If I put the space between these, wait, well, you no, know, it doesn't do that. Never mind. Um, or if it did, it didn't show. And um, yeah, on computer version of Mathematica, if I put space between two escapes, uh, that's what the, that colon looking thing is, it turned into a middle dot. But anyways, that's my system of three equations. And I'm solving it for three variables, i1, i2, and i3. Okay. Um, and yeah, uh, I, uh, so I did a shift enter to have it evaluate and that's the answer it gets. And this is really why you might uh, want to know about computer algebra system because hey, there's the answer. <laughs> and if you have to go through this manually for 10 minutes and solve it, then it, this gives you something that you can check it against. Now, I see something that's a little bit concerning, which is the double negatives that's going to lead to potential confusion. So let me uh, do this. I'm going to, oh, you can do this multiple different ways. Let me um, flaunt my knowledge of mathematical syntax and uh, post-append uh, with a simplify. <laughs> so it got rid of the, um, the negative signs. You can do that, or you can also do this. Let me just do one more time. Simplify at, this is prepending of the function composition. And really in most of the programming languages, they wouldn't have this uh, crazy looking S sign and double slashes um, syntax. They would simply do, have you do this. Put the output of this as an argument for that function there. That's what those two almost uh, unnecessary syntax is doing. Anyways, um, so that's one way to get it. Now, this is great for small and simple system of equations like this. The, um, the challenge you will run into is that, especially in a real world type application, where you might have a system of 500 equations. <laughs> um, 500 would be small system of equations if you're doing anything like a finite element analysis. Um, so you might have a system of 10,000 equations and it'll be generated in an algorithmic sense. So you wouldn't be uh, writing it down one by one. Um, when you're doing that, this uh, simply will at some point uh, stop working or you will need a better way or you, you will need to get a, a need to be able to get access to, to lower level of representation so that you can use more um, specialized optimization functions or whatever. Um, so this is something you might have seen in your college algebra class which is this, when you have a linear system of equations, you can actually turn that into, you can represent it as a matrix multiplication. So I can rewrite this into a standard form so that I can represent it as a matrix multiplication. Once I've done that, I can uh, redo this exact same calculation except as matrix multiplication. So let me do that here. I need to do a little bit of, by hand algebra. So let me do that uh, over here using my zoom annotations. Uh, 
this is probably visible. Okay, so I'm gonna rewrite equations one, two, and three into the, what could be called the standard form, which is uh, I'm going to treat the currents as the each individual terms, put all the terms linear to it on the left-hand side and put any other terms, the, what is it called? The inhomogeneous terms on the right-hand side. Uh, by the way, I could be using that term wrong. It's been a while. I know what things are and I know how to use them. I don't necessarily know what they are called. Um, so I'm rewriting the first equation so that it's I1 minus I2 minus I3 is equal to zero. I'm rewriting the second equation. So the second equation doesn't have any I's, I1 in it, so it's a zero. Um, and I see that plus I, oh wait, I need to do this in correct orders uh, for the next step. Uh, I'm going to write down the coefficients first. So it's gonna be R2 times I2 and then minus, R3 times I3. And I need to move all the other constant terms over to the other, or the terms that don't multiply to any of the current uh, terms. So that's gonna be V2 minus V1. Just to making sure that's the exact same sense in which I use them here, yeah. So, okay, um, the last equation. It's gonna be, oh, I need to decide, well, either, hmm. you know, it's gonna have a lot of minuses. Let me imagine multiplying through by uh, negative one first, then it's gonna be R1 times I1 uh, plus R2 times I2 uh, plus zero for the third term is equal to, and you know, imagine having moved over V2 and then multiply through by minus one, so it's gonna be V2 here. So this is the equation in standard form. Uh, having written it this way makes it easy to um, kind of visualize the coefficient matrix, which you might remember from your, again, college algebra, or I think it might be our math one class if you took it. Um, so these are the coefficients, one, minus one, minus one, zero, R2, minus R3, R1, R2, zero. And this is what I mean by coefficient matrix. Let me write it down, then I think you can see it more easily rather than me trying to you know, say out loud what it's gonna be. So I'm going to rewrite this system of equations as a, a, a square matrix multiplying to column vectors. So I have the first the three by three square matrix, um, one, minus one, minus one, zero R2 minus R3, R1, R2, zero. And let me set this up with the column vector, I1, I2, I3. And you can see, check for yourself later, maybe, um, that when you do this multi uh, matrix multiplication, so you are going to get uh, three by one, uh, it's row first and then column, right? Three by one column vector. And the first element of the column vector will be uh, one times I1 minus one times I2 minus one times I3. So it's gonna be this uh, expression here. And the same thing for the second row and the third row. So um, you can represent the above system of equations this way uh, by having the left-hand side of column vector equal to this um, right-hand side. Oh wait, I need more space here. So let me uh, leave a little bit of space uh, equal to uh, zero, V2 minus V1, V2. So, I mean, so far this is just a interesting way to rewrite a system of three equations into one equation involving matrices. Now, what's more than simply interesting is if you represent this as a square bait, uh, matrix, a linear operator that I might call A, and if you can somehow find the inverse of this square matrix, a minus one, then you can do this. 
you can take this entire expression, multiply by a minus one, a inverse on the left, then, and you know, with the matrix multiplications, you have to be careful about the uh, left and right order because if they don't commute. <laughs> then the, on the left-hand side, a inverse times a will cancel out, you'll get one. So you get i1, i2, i3 equal to the a inverse times the, uh, I don't know what this is called, this column vector. I don't know what it's called, the constant vector. Uh, anyways, um, so if you have access to a system that can take inverses of matrices for you, then solving this system of equations can be done in this very automatic programmatic way. And the system that can take inverses of matrices for you is computer algebra system. That's kind of the key feature of a computer algebra system. If it's a symbolic com computer algebra system, which I think they are almost by definition like Mathematica, then, um, then they can do this symbolically. And even the programming languages that can't do symbolic operation like MATLAB, the without the symbolics package or Octave, if we are using MATLAB, free MATLAB clones, um, they can take inverses numerically. There are algorithms there for that. And um, so if somehow all these parameters values were known numerically, then you can do this numerically. So let me do this exact same calculation here using Mathematica. And uh, we'll just verify that the result we get matches the result we got using the built-in functions here. So let me let me set that up. I need to define the matrices. Uh, let's see, A is equal to, and I hope I remember my matrix notation right. Uh, this is the first row, and then the second row, and then the third row. Okay, so that's gonna be matrix. I'm pressing just to enter because I need to define additional variables. Um, I'm going to build a vector. Um, let me call that uh, V. So I press the escape, typed in V and I'm pressing escape again so that I have access to that Greek symbol. Um, so that's gonna be a column vector zero, V two minus V one. Two. Okay, um, so those two are the variables that I need access to. And um, what I'm going to do is, hmm, one thing I'm not sure is if I do A times V, what does it do? Um, so, you know, when once you have matrices, you have to start worrying about, are you talking about multiplication as a matrix multiplication or element by element multiplication? Like there are so many kinds of multiplications. I want to make sure whatever operation I do um, is the matrix multiplication, not element by element. Uh, Okay, yeah, this is giving me something that's weird. So I'm pretty sure this is an element by element multiplication. Let me try this. I think that's gonna be the matrix multiplication. Yeah, okay. So I need to use uh, the period. <laughs> that's why <laughs> matrix multiplication is in Mathematica. So I'm going to take inverse of A. The thing will do that for me. Times matrix multiplication, the column vector, that's the the thing on the right hand side. Then the resulting column vector, the first element should be I1, second I2, third I3. So hmm, it's hard to compare this with that. They look different. Let me run it through a simplification just to be sure. Post append with simplify. And oh, they look the same, I think. Yeah, so this is uh, how, how you make use of computer algebra system. And this uh, operation, uh, this kind of set of steps is basically the exact same step you can use on any computer algebra system, being mindful of their own 
syntax, programming syntax. Um, so it's a it's a, this procedure that I want you to demonstrate because whenever you are dealing with a, a complex physical system, it's probably going to involve uh, solving a system of equations. And the more complex a particular model or simulation is, the more number of a system of equations you have. And at some point, you just have to do it with a program. You can you cannot expect it to solve a system of even 10 equations by hand. It gets too time consuming and unwieldy. And um, so yeah, yeah well, Mathematica is one of the uh, well-known industry, I don't know, standard <laughs> computer algebra system, but which costs money. You can access a version of it for free at oframcloud.com. 